In this lecture video we will discuss fundamentals of multimedia signal processing. So let's start by differentiating between analog and digital signals. Analog signals exhibit continuous variations such as sound waves or light intensity measured over time. The signal value ST is continuous and represented in real numbers. Digital signals, however, are represented at discrete time intervals through sampling and quantization and the digitization process is the conversion of the signals into a stream of numbers that are actually used for efficient computer representation. Sampling involves capturing the signals at discrete points in time, while quantization maps these values into discrete amplitude levels, and we can see this here in this figure. Basically, the key question here is how finely the signal should be sampled and how uniformly it should be quantized. So this means how dense our grid should be in both dimensions. In the vertical dimension, it impacts the quantization. So the more dense it is, the finer our value granularity. And in the horizontal dimension, it impacts our sampling frequency. So more dense grid means higher frequency. To digitize a signal without loss, we must consider the Nyquist theorem. And in order to understand that, we take a look at this slide here, where we can see that signals can be decomposed into a sum of sinoids or frequency components. We have a fundamental frequency component at the top, and then we have twice the frequency, three times the frequency, and so on and so forth with different factors and we combine all these components into one combined signal which we can see on the right and we end up with an approximated step function or rectangular function. Now please note that the bottom level here where we have uh, five times the fundamental frequency is our highest frequency component. And this is important because the Nyquist theorem says that the sampling rate must be at least twice the maximum frequency of the signal, denoted as fs larger than 2fm. And if the signal cannot be sampled fast enough, then we can reduce the signal frequency by using a low-pass filter, which only lets low frequency pass and cutting off higher frequency in order to avoid uh, aliasing effects, basically. So this allows us to filter a signal from 22 kilohertz down to 11 kilohertz. So let's dive further into the details of quantization and coding. Quantization involves converting the sampled signal values into a finite number of discrete levels, which are then represented in binary form for digital encoding. For example, if we would have four bits, we could represent 16 different levels. And if we have eight bits, uh, we would have 256 quantization levels. The goal is to distribute these levels effectively, either linearly, as we can see here in our example on the right, or non-linearly, as we will see later. And this is based on the application and also the presence of quantization noise and errors. An important concept here is the signal-to-noise ratio, or SNR, because it quantifies the relationship between the desired signal power and the power of the background noise. And this is measured logarithmically in decibel, as we can see here in this formula, it's 10 times the logarithm of the signal energy divided by the noise energy, or let's say signal power by noise power. And if the signal is a periodic waveform, like we can see here on the right bottom, then the signal energy is proportional to the square of its amplitude, meaning that we have a squared divided by two. In real-world applications, the SNR helps us to determine the quality of the digitized signal or the fidelity. And if we have a low value of SNR, it means we have a low quality, a higher value or high value means we have a good quality. And this is important in many areas like telecommunications, but also audio processing and also video processing, as we will see later, where we have, for example, the PSNR value to determine the visual quality. Another important concept is the signal to quantization noise ratio or SQNR, which measures the efficiency 
of quantization in digitized signals and quantifies the ratio between the signal power and the power of the quantization noise that is introduced during the digitization process. In general, SQNR is expressed as a logarithmic formula again, with 10 times the logarithm of the power of the signal divided by the power of the quantization noise. And here it is important to understand that the quantization noise comes from rounding the analog signal values to the nearest quantization level. So, if we would have a signal with an amplitude range from minus A to A and N quantization levels, then we can approximate this quantization error by 2A divided by N. If we have an N bit quantization, it means that we have 2 to the power of N levels and the maximum quantization noise occurs when the signal amplitude deviates maximally from the quantized value. So the SQNR for a uniformly quantized signal can be expressed as 10 times the logarithm of 2 to the power of n minus 1 squared divided by, in our case, 0 0.5 squared. Now this formula basically shows that for every additional bit in the quantization process, the SQNR increases by about 6 decibel. And this emphasizes that there is a direct correlation between the bit depth of the quantization and the reduction in quantization noise. Now let's take a look at the difference between linear quantization and nonlinear quantization. With linear quantization, we actually map the analog signals uniformly across the discrete levels. Uh, and if the amplitude or sound intensity doubles, also our quantization value doubles. And this is used a lot in areas or systems like audio CD or GSM, but this does not reflect how human audio perception really works, where we actually have non-linear perception. In order to understand non-linear quantization, let's take a look at Weber's law, which deals with the just noticeable difference between two stimuli. So this has been determined through empirical studies that have been performed on weight perception, and they found out that if a person lifts a weight of one kilogram and this weight is increased by 10 grams, the person will not notice this difference because the threshold for noticing this would be 50 grams in this example. Now, if you have a weight of five kilograms, the weight increase must be even higher than 50 grams in order to notice it. And this basically says that there is a relation of the original value or original weight. So it suggests actually for audio application that finer resolution is needed for smaller values or smaller signal changes at lower intensities and coarser resolution is needed for higher signal changes at higher intensities. Now on the next slide we can see the idea of this nonlinear quantization namely that the intensity values of signals are mapped logarithmically so that we have a finer resolution in frequency ranges where human hearing is more sensitive and this ensures better performance in representing audio signals at lower sound levels. So in this figure, by the way, the X axis is the amplitude or sound intensity and you can see that the input signal values are spread across the quantization space but the y-axis, which is the quantization levels, is non-linearly distributed. So instead of equally spaced values, the levels are dense near the lower amplitudes and sparser for higher amplitudes. Now Weber's law is particularly used in telecommunications and audio encoding, where the micro law and A law was introduced. And here the idea is that according to Weber's law, the smallest detectable change in a stimulus, such as a sound, is proportional to the magnitude of the stimulus itself. So in simple terms, this means that lower amplitude signals or quiet sounds are perceived much more sensitively than louder ones. So we need a finer resolution as we have already learned. And 
nonlinear quantization addresses this by compressing the dynamic range of signals, where we have a finer quantization step for smaller amplitudes and a coarser step for larger amplitudes. And again, the microlaw and the A-law algorithms mathematically map this input signal into a logarithmic scale before the quantization, so that we have a higher fidelity in those ranges and regions where the human ear is more sensitive. Now the idea of nonlinear quantization is used in the microlaw and A-law for audio processing in telecommunications. There are just two different laws because of different regions in the world. For example, A-law is used in Europe and microlaw is more used in North America, for example. And both have a formula to define the quantization levels, which we can see here below for a microlaw. And the idea here is to provide a logarithmic relationship between the input signal levels and the output quantized levels. So for example, a microlaw starts with the sine function of the signal value, which is then divided by the logarithm of 1 plus mu, where mu is a parameter. I will talk about that in a second. And this is multiplied with the logarithm of 1 plus mu multiplied with the absolute value of the signal value divided by the peak signal value. Now, this mu value or parameter is defined as 255 um, for the micro law in North America. And the A law has a very similar formula and also a parameter A, which is typically 87.6. But the rest is very similar and it's the same idea. So finally, this nonlinear quantization using micro law or A law has several benefits. First, it provides high accuracy for low amplitude signals. Second, it reduces the quantization noise. And third, it also has a more uniform signal to noise ratio across different intensities. And this approach for this nonlinear quantization is also the basis for the perceptual audio coding. So this is all for this video. Thank you very much for watching.